Kimberly Swanner again with KimandCaboodle.com and BizArts Center in Rockville, Maryland. And today I am going to be showing you how to do some hand building at home. So um, unfortunately, a lot of our students here that are not able to come to the BizArts Center due to the uh, COVID-19 uh, stay at home requests. Uh, we, you know, a lot of you don't have the same ceramic supplies as you might have uh, here in studio. So what I have here is a selection of things that you might have in your home so that you can make something uh, fun while you're uh, stuck at home. So uh, we've got a rolling pin here. It does not have to have the little rods at the end. It can just be a, a rounded, uh, you know, wooden dowel. We got a wooden rice paddle. Plastic ones are fine, but plastic likes to stick to ceramic, so highly recommend a wooden one and preferably one that is smooth, not one that has little bumpies on it. Um, we've got some cardboard, which I have made some stencils out of. Highly recommend making stencils if you're planning a project. A ruler or straight edge. A uh, reusable cup. This is a yogurt cup. It says yogurt on it. Um, a plastic knife that has very small serrated edge. Um, this we may or may not use, we'll see. Um, a paring knife, uh, something with a very sharp, smooth edge, nothing that has, um, nothing that has a, a heavy, sharp, serrated edge. You want it to be nice and smooth, so paring knives are great. Um, scissors are fine if you can't find anything else, um, but ideally you wanna have something that it cuts very nice and smoothly um, without any sort of warping. Uh, fork. And two chopsticks. Now you wanna make sure your chopsticks are the same size. Um, if you wanna make a big slab, then you wanna make sure that your chopsticks have a buddy. Uh, so like if I had four chopsticks that were the same size, so that I could tape them together to make a longer dowel. Um, but we're gonna make something pretty small today, so uh, just the pair is fine. Uh, sponge, any sponge is fine. Uh, and then one of my favorite students here at VizArts, um, Miss Martha, she is one of our lovely hand builders and uh, she's got some lace on her cart that I'm gonna be borrowing today, so uh, thanks, Martha. And um, we're gonna use some lace uh, for texture uh, because not everybody has rubber mats at home that have stamps and textures. So uh, I'm gonna clear the space real quick because I'm gonna show you how to make the slab first. Um, now you'll notice I did not introduce a tool that is here uh, because unfortunately I don't have a um, used like plastic card uh, or anything that I can show you that some people will use for smoothing out their clay. So if you are going to, you expect to be working from home um, with your ceramics and uh, you are, you know, you have to have one tool that you can take with you. I do highly recommend that you take home your metal uh, rubber, not what am I saying, metal rubber, what am I saying here? My metal rib, because this is a really great smoothing tool and um, it's very, like, it's just one of those tools that even a plastic credit card that you cut up and smooth down doesn't quite replace how nice this smooths your clay out. Um, I also have a pencil here, um, which will come in handy later. So, uh, I've got my area clear. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going, I've got my cube of clay. Uh, this is about a pound. Um, and I'm just going to take the palm of my hand and just pat it down, flip it over. Same thing. Now, notice I'm working on a concrete board. Um, this is uh, what our tables are covered with here at BizArts. Um, I do recommend like that you don't work on just your kitchen table. Uh, put down some newspaper or something um, or a board, a wooden board if you've got one. Um, it just, you know, you don't want a smooth, really smooth surface that your clay is gonna stick to. Uh, just because again, it'll stick to it and make a big old mess. So once I get this down to about as thick as my finger, so you can see about as thick as my finger, I'm gonna get my, chopsticks, my wooden dowels, and set them. Make sure they line right up here next to the clay. And I'm gonna take my wooden rolling pin. Now, I don't really like putting my hands on the sides here because I feel like I get an uneven distribution of weight pressing. So I like to really just go for it on the top with my hands. And I really wanna make sure that the clay does not go over my dowels and that my roller eventually is gonna rest on these dowels. So I'm gonna flip my clay over just so I can do both sides. And I really hate rolling pins, I'm not a baker. Um, slab rollers are beautiful things, so if you can afford a slab roller for your home, they run about $800 each for the cheaper end ones. Um, 
that are brand new. Uh, pasta makers are great if you're just making really tiny ceramics, but uh, really want to make sure that your, your rolling pin is staying right on top of those dowels. Otherwise, you'll get a very uneven distribution of clay. We're gonna do this now just to see if I can get it a little bit faster. And you wanna make sure that whatever dowel you're using, as far as like uh, toothpick, toothpicks, what am I saying here? Um, chopsticks, you know, that they are as, you know, the same thickness throughout as possible. Some chopsticks do taper out um, the, you know, I mean, they taper out at the very end, but some taper out a little bit sooner than that. So do make sure that whatever dowel you're using, that you are, uh, got some debris in there, that you're, that they're level throughout until the very ends. So turn your clay into multiple directions so that you're getting it nice and even. Feel your clay all the time. If you feel areas that are uneven, you wanna make sure to readdress that. I'm actually gonna use my cutting tool, paring knife, to cut off these edges since it's getting a little bit inconsistent as far as where that goes. That's just the clay pushing, saying, hey, I've got a lot of clay over here. But these dowels will just stop that clay exactly where they are with that exact thickness. This is pretty good. So that's using a roller at home. Um, another thing I like to do personally, um, which takes a little bit of practice, is that once I have my clay rolled out, and I'm not measuring that or anything, um, that's just me cutting off those excess ends. Once I have my clay rolled out, I like to do kind of like a pizza flop to it. This makes my clay a little bit thinner and a little bit wider. I don't like doing this dough, uh, though <laughs> until my clay has been rolled out to be the same thickness because otherwise it can, again, the plop can have some uneven distributions. And you don't just want to like flop it down because that is too rough on the clay and it does not evenly distribute the impact. What you're wanting to have happen is that the clay is kind of grabbing the table as you plop it towards your body. So now this is, this is a little bit thinner than I started, really good thickness um, for the project we're gonna do. We're gonna do butter dish. Um, now this is video one of two videos. I'm gonna show you how to make the flat part of the butter dish, the tray where the butter sits first. And then in the second video, I'm gonna show you how to make the top of the butter dish, the lid, so to speak. So um, I've got my clay here. Now we're going to go to my stencils that I have made. Highly recommend using stencils. Um, so this stencil, it's just out of cardboard. I measured it um, four inches by 8.5 inches. And this is for the base. And then this is two inches by 6.5 inches. This is for the top and sides, uh, two sides of the uh, butter dish uh, on the lid. And then on the other side, I've got a little square of two by two that I've drawn and those are for the, the ends. So um, we're not gonna use that till the next demo though. So. Um, you take your stencil, make sure that your clay fits your stencil. This does not quite fit, um, and that's okay. I'm gonna just do a little bit of extra stretching. Like that, and we'll see if we get in there. Yes, excellent. So we just got in there. So I'm gonna take my pencil, and I'm gonna draw that line. I'm not even really gonna worry about my ends because my ends are almost perfect there. So, and any paper works good. I just like the more rigid, the, the, the more rigid, uh, you know, kind of thin cardboard cardstock. Um, but, you know, printer paper works fine as using as a measuring tool. Just make sure you've got a straight edge or something that you can go along with that too. You could even just measure it like, you know, with a ruler, which I don't know where I put my ruler. It's here somewhere. There it is. So instead of having to like draw a stencil, I could have used my ruler and just been like, okay, I'm gonna measure eight and a half and measure four, make my marks and, and then, you know, hope that I cut straight. Um, if you're going to do a pattern on this, then the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is use that irreplaceable to tool, that metal rib, smooth that out just a little bit, make sure there's no debris, everything's looking good and smooth. 
really good for doing the patterns. Now, you don't wanna cut your stencil shape out until after you've used your pattern. Because what happens is if you use your, um, I should say yeah, your, your, after you use your uh, stamp or, or whatever your sort of texture uh, piece is going to be. And the reason is that as we push this down, it warps the clay. And so what we don't want to have is clay that is warped um, after we've cut it, because that, you know, will unfortunately have a bad effect of um, making some areas too thin. And we don't want anything to be super thin. So I'm using this lovely lace, beautiful lace. Very easy to clean lace just with soap and water by hand when you're done. And I'm pressing that in very gently with my fingers, making sure that that lace really gets embedded in. Because once I pick this up, that's it. I can't do anything else with it. Um, it's really hard to set things back once you have, um, you know, push them down. Now what I can also do here, bring back my rolling pin and use that to press this. Oh, I've got a little boogers in here. Get out of there to press that pattern in. You wanna see some of that clay coming up through the lace. That way you know that lace is embedded. And you could use anything. You can use seashells, you can use rocks. You can make your own textures just by like doing dots with pencils and things like that. Or you can have it be perfectly smooth. It's your choice. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm really happy with this. It's really nice and, and pressed in there. So now I'm gonna very gently start to peel it away. Oh yes, this is looking really good. Very nice lace pattern there. Now I don't have it going all the way across and that's on purpose. I'm actually gonna clean some of this up with my metal rib because I'm a sucker for things that are like a little bit asymmetrical patterns that like start and stop. Big fan of stuff like that. So I am going to um, actually use my ruler and kind of make some measuring lines here on where I want my pattern to kind of start and stop. So I'm gonna say like right here at the three inch mark is where my pattern is gonna stop. Make sure I did that right. I'm actually, it's actually a two inch mark because I'm using the one as my point of reference. And then I'm gonna have that pattern continue for mm, no, that might be good. That might be good for just a little asymmetry. We'll see if I change my mind. So I'm gonna smooth that out right there, give it a nice hard line. And I'm gonna make sure this lines up again with my stencil. I'll put my stencil over this and do another measurement. I'm gonna draw, that's not a straight edge. I'm actually gonna draw a physical line here that will be embedded into the butter dish so that the patterns will stop right there. Um, now you may be able to see like, you know, if you use a, but I'm using a colored pencil right now, it's blue. Um, and, and that's not just, I just grabbed a pencil to be honest with you. But um, if you use a pencil, you might see some graphite getting left behind in your clay and that's fine, it burns right out. So I'm gonna make sure my lines are still nice and fresh and sharp like that. Very nice, oh, I did not draw that very straight. There we go. All right, so this is gonna be, this whole inside part is gonna be my butter dish. Um, so now that the dish is, you know, I've got my pattern in, it looks great. Um, if I want to, I can flip this over very gently, smooth out this side. It's already very smooth, I'm not worried about it. Um, so now I'm going to put my stencil back down. I'm gonna use that paring knife. And I'm gonna use, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut on that straight edge out my piece that I have slabbed. So you definitely wanna make sure that if you're working like on a kitchen table or something, 
you don't want to be using a paring knife or any sort of sharp thing that is going to cut into your table. So keep that in mind. Um, we're going to use this clay in a little bit. So here is my little butter dish. Um, now, you're like, well, well, it's just flat. That's fine. Um, and it doesn't have to, this can be more than just a butter dish. This can be, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can use this for. I could put a little hole in it. It could be for burning incense. Um, I could, you know, put keys in it, little tchotchkes, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. So now that I've got this here, I actually have the insert. This is for the lid. And so I want to actually put this right in the middle so that I can bring the sides up around it. And so I'm gonna start here. Actually, before I do that, um, if you want to, you can keep the edges straight like this. Uh, because this is a little bit floral, I'm gonna see if we've got some cookie cutters. I should have, this, this is what happens when I think on my feet. Um, it's like, boy, I sure do hope we have this supply here so that I don't have to, you know, elongate the video longer than necessary. So um, we've got a really great cookie cutter that has some, um, you know, frilly, like looped edges. So I'm gonna put my um, stencil here to kind of uh, act as a safety guide because all I really want is this edge here, if I can do it without hurting the integrity of the rest of the, of the piece. So we're gonna try and push this down just a little bit. A lot of times if you can like change its shape the, if you manipulate the cookie cutter shape a little bit, um, ideally I would actually like cut this apart, but I don't want to do that. It's a Vizarts property. So I'm going to gently pr press this down and cut that edge so that now my corner is a little cute. And I'm going to use that pencil or I can use my paring knife. I'm actually going to trust the pencil a little bit more to kind of cut away the excess. Oh, that's super cute. This is very cute. There we go. So now I've got a little cutie. Little cutie. Very nice. And I'm going to do that to all the edges. Um, so again, just going to press it into the one corner and not press too much. Oh, I could do a little bit more cookie cutters. A lot easier to uh, you know mess up and put back down than a pattern might even want to continue that along the top of there actually uh, that might not be possible though that's what happens when you think on your feet is that you're like mm, how long do we really want this video to be cut that away and then cut that away I'm gonna smooth that out. There we are. So we got little cuties. I like the little cuties. They're great. I'm gonna do the other end. So you know, make your butter dish as time consuming as you want. You know, we could have, you know, made this nice and smooth and not really needed to worry about um you know, little decorations and stuff, but sometimes little decorations are nice. Sometimes, sometimes you like a little bit, seeing something a little bit special there. And don't be afraid to freehand things too, you know, you make this your own piece. Do what makes you happy. And find ways to, you know, really insert yourself into the works you're making because that's what makes them yours because you can follow the same pattern as somebody else that's fine um you know we have patterns for a reason it's to make things a little bit easier but then you find out how to make it unique to you and that's what makes these projects extra special okay so i've got my little cuties down now um they might be hard to see. I kind of messed up my pressing there, but maybe a little bit easier to see here. Hopefully that's easy to see the little cutie ends, little ruffles. Um, I'm gonna take my, kind of make this space a little bit clean again. Take that smooth metal rib to get some of this debris out. Make it nice and smooth. 
fix that up a little bit. There we go. Okay. I might even take just a tiny bit of this lace where it got, um, where this got a little bit disrupted and press some of that in. No, that did, well, that kind of helped. Anyways. So now I've got this. I'm going to put my stencil here in the middle. And I'm going to hold it down so it doesn't move anywhere. And I'm going to gently fold my edge up just a bit. You want to be very gentle because this whole time your clay has been drying. And so now it has become what we like to call a hard slab. Even though it's not like, you know, hard like a rock hard, um, it is hardening. It is we, you know, when it's a pottery piece, we like to call it leather hard. So when you're working in a hand building with leather hard clay, you are hard slabbing. Or at least if you're using slabs anyways, that is a hard slab. So gently turn my corners, you know, turn all my sides up. And now I'm gonna take my stencil out and gently pinch those corners where they meet. You don't want to make it a hard angled pinch though. If you make it too angular, your piece will crack. Because clay does not like sharp edges unless you are really babying your piece from start to finish. Usually people who end up with clay that has sharp, or not sharp, but like edges that are really well defined, um, many of those were made with molds and not just like laying it on a slump mold, but also they're doing it like a pour in mold. So they're using slip casting. Um, I'm just smoothing out this edge a little bit. Um, and slip casting, you can get perfect pieces, like, you know, gorgeous, perfect, angular, sharp looking pieces. Um, but not so much, you know, that takes a lot more time and uh, a lot of patience if you're doing it with um, slabs of clay like this. A lot of people will make um, their corners too sharp, too pointy. Um, and they won't round them out and they end up with cracks all along those areas because they dry super quick and the crack just goes right down into that area that um, was super tight and angular. Uh, so now I could call this done. Um, this is a finished base. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is while it's drying, just as a little bit of extra insurance, I've got my little paper board for it to dry on. I'm going to set this up. And so in order to prevent slumping in these corners, I'm gonna take that extra clay that I had, I'm gonna make little snakes. Little bitty snakes. And these snakes can be any length, um, it's your choice. Um, but the, the important thing is that the snakes are the same thickness. You wanna make sure that your snakes are the same thickness. That way um, your, you know, everything is going to sit roughly at the same height. We're not gonna fire these snakes because this is a very shallow piece. I'm not too worried about um, the snakes needing to be in the kiln with the piece. You could though, you could fire these snakes, um, these coils, and uh, then you have coils for forever if you want to use them. Um, coils fired with your piece in the kiln does prevent uh, the slumping from, you know, this from dropping back down in the kiln, but that's only really a big concern if you are, uh, the, the taller your sides are and the more that they're leaning out. Uh, something that's just beveled really slightly like this isn't gonna really slump very much in a kiln unless it's a really hot kiln and you've got the wrong clay body. So I've got my little coil here. Um, these are roughly the same. So I'm gonna actually do a pinch on the corner so that way it can rest up like that and slide that right underneath so that my edge can rest on something. And do the same thing to this one, pinch. And do that to this side. So you can see I'm just letting that insert. So here's my little coil, and I'm just letting that sit right underneath. And then I'm gonna lay that clay down just a little bit on top so it has something to lay out on top of. Take a little bitty bit for this midsection here the clay does not have to, you do not want to try and get everything to stick together. You just want it to just rest. I'm going to cut a little bit out of here. And this is how you want your piece to dry. Now what you decide to do with this piece once it's dry is up to you. You can sand this if you want it to be extra smooth. Um, you know, you could underglaze it before firing it. 
Um, there's a lot of things that you could do with your piece um, once it's been dried a little bit. Um, but for now, this is just, you know, we're just doing something real simple. I'm gonna pinch these ends here and slide that up underneath. There we go. Lay that back down. Turn my board, make sure everything lines up in the way that I want it. And now this just sits and dries. I can, I can smooth out any edges if I wanna smooth out some edges here. Take a tiny bit of water. Notice we've not used any water until this one point. And I'm just trying to smooth out that edge so we don't really see that connecting line that my stencil made. I'm gonna do that a little bit in here. You could use a little paintbrush too to kind of smooth some of that out. But I don't wanna to do too much. I don't wanna mess up the integrity of the, the lace either. But really don't need to use any water at all. Very little water if you're going to. Very, very little. But that is our little tray, little plate for our uh, butter dish. And the next demo, next video, no video number two for the butter dish is gonna be making the lid. Uh, I hope that this was educational for you, and if not, at least mildly entertaining. And I look forward to having you watch in the next video. Stay safe out there and uh, enjoy. Bye.